Hi guys, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to our series of Active Directory Federation Services. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Relying Party Trusts. Now, if you're watching this series from the beginning, what we already know is what is a claim-based identity, how to install and set up ADFS server, and what is Federation metadata and endpoints of your ADFS server. Now, the third point that I mentioned over here is actually required by your application to send a request to ADFS servers, which I have covered in the previous video. In this video, our focus will be knowing what is a relying party trust and how you can create a relying party trust on your ADFS server. Now, there is a lot of content that has to be covered in terms of relying party trust, so I have divided this into two videos. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about ADFS help tool, which is available by Microsoft. And you can use it for your own lab to test different sort of combinations in terms of claim rules and configuration. And the last thing is that you don't need any application. Now, what do I mean by this? That whenever you will read any article, which is moreover related to an application with which you can test authentication with ADFS, every article refers that you have to set up an IS server. Now, this is something which is not required with this application, which I'm going to show you. Now, it's pretty much obvious that from this particular video or from the next video, you guys might have some questions. Please feel free to ask them in the comment section and I will be happy to answer all of them. Moving on and understanding what is a relying party trust. So for that, assume there is an application which has to contact the ADFS server of Concepts Work so that the users from Concepts Work can log in into this application. And for that, what the application has to do is to send the authentication request to the ADFS server. Now, this is because ADFS is acting as a claim provider for the application. Now, what do I mean by this? That application is expecting a token from ADFS which it can consume and complete all the other tasks. Now this can only be possible when your application knows to which endpoint the request has to be routed and that is something which is known by the application because you have provided the federation metadata of your ADFS. Now the question comes once the application has routed the request to your ADFS server and ADFS server has received the request, what's next? So depending upon the application requirement, ADFS will do certain tasks, likewise sending some sort of claims to the application. Now all this configuration, which is related to application, which is required by ADFS is saved in the form of relying party trust. That means when the ADFS is receiving a request for a specific application, it should know that whether the request which it has received is a legitimate request or not. So that's the reason for every application that is contacting your ADFS, there must be a relying party trust for your application. Now there is something more which is very important and that's what we called claim provider trust. Now I'm going to talk about the default behavior of ADFS, though you can have multiple claim providers. That is something which I will be covering when I will be specifically talking about claim provider trust. But to get a bit of idea about claim provider trust is really important because in the next video, we will be checking about the tool and with the help of that tool, ADFS will be processing different claims as well. So now, your application is contacting ADFS because your ADFS is the claim provider for your application. And on your ADFS, you have a relying party trust for your application. But now the question comes that it's not the ADFS which is actually holding the user object or where the user object is created. It's in fact the Active Directory where the user object is created. Now what ADFS has to do it has to actually query the attributes of a user object from AD. And in order to do this, there must be a communication between ADFS and AD. So the claim provider trust that is created by default for AD is something which allows ADFS to contact your Active Directory. 
Then, depending upon the configuration on the relying party trust, ADFS will query certain claims and will send a token to your application. And in this case, what is happening, Active Directory is acting as a claim provider for your ADFS. Now, I will switch to my VM where I have ADFS and then it will make a lot of sense once we try creating a relying party trust. And I will also show you the configuration for claim provider. So this is my machine where I have ADFS. And now what I'll do is I'll launch ADFS management. Before we can go ahead and create a relying party trust, try checking in the claim provider trust option and by default you will get Active Directory listed here. And guess what? There is no option to disable this Active Directory claim provider trust. Now let's come back to relying party trust. This is 2016. In 2012 R2, the way options are getting listed, it might be different, but this is a very common option. It will be available in 2012 R2 as well. So what I'll do is I'll remove this relying party trust. And as you can see now, there is no relying party trust available on this particular ADFS server. So now let's start with knowing how you can create a relying party trust. For that, click on this option which says add relying party trust. And the very first console that you will get, it will ask you that what kind of application is it for which you are creating a relying party trust. So since we are focusing on claim based identity, so the option that I'm going to choose will be claims aware. And now I'll click on start. The first option that you see here says that import data about the relying party published online or on our local network. Now, the way you provide federation metadata of your ADFS server to your application, in the same way, application also has to publish a federation metadata on a specific link, or they can simply provide you a file, an XML file, which you can import here from this console. So if your application vendor says that in order to fetch the federation metadata of my application, you have to go to a link, let's say HTTPS application.com. What you can do is you can simply type in that link over here and then click on next. And the federation metadata will be queried for that particular application. If your application vendor has given you a XML file, select this option and then click on browse. Select that particular file and upload that file here and from that XML file, the respective information will be queried. Now, the third option is actually the most important option wherein your application vendor has just sent you a text file with some of the information related to federation metadata and you don't know how to proceed with that. So we will check this option because this is the option which will actually let you know what all settings are available in the relying body trust. So these two options are fairly simple and uh, you, you, you'll not learn more until unless you navigate specifically to relying party trust properties. But I'll choose the third option so that we can cover each and every option which is required for relying party trust. Now the moment I will click on next, the first option that I'm getting here is display name. So let's say I'm typing application test and in the notes I can simply type this is a test application now this means what this will be the name of my relying party trust now i will click on next now this is a very important option which you get while you try to create a relying party trust and that is that while adfs will send a token to application the claims inside that token should be encrypted now this means what that when you will try to decrypt that token with the help of Fedor or any other tool, you will not be able to see the claims directly because the claims will be decrypted by a specific certificate. And this is the exact information which is also mentioned here and that is specify an op optional token encryption certificate. The token encryption certificate is used to encrypt the claims that are sent to the relying party. The relying party will use the private key of the certificate to decrypt the claim 
that are sent to it that means your ADFS will use this certificate which is provided by your application encrypt the claims inside the token and once this token has been sent to the to your application your application can use the private key of the same certificate and decrypt the claims that is the purpose of this particular option now let's click on next and understand that this console or this set of option is asking you what kind of protocol your application is going to use to send authentication request whether it is a WS fed or whether it is a SAML so if it is a WS fed application you can select this option if it is SAML you can select this option so let's assume that uh, my application is a WS fed application and I'm doing HTTPS application.com so that's all required from this particular console and then you can click on next now this is a very important option because when authentication request is being received by the application in the authentication request itself there is a parameter which should be same as to what you have saved in relying party trust identifier when we will talk about the tool that we are going to use to study the authentication process I'll show you the same value which application is sending in the authentication request is present in the relying party trust identifiers for this particular demo just understand this is a very important option and the value of relying party identifier should be identical in the relying party trust as well as the request which your application is sending now in our case since it is a test application I'll simply click on next and here you will see different access control policy now this is a change which has been introduced in 2016 and the first option here says that permit everyone so any user who can log into ADFS will get the access to this particular application the second option says permit everyone and require MFA that means what the user has to complete multi-factor authentication now it could be Azure MFA or it could be your certificate auth the reason why I said Azure MFA because it's 2016 now if you have selected the first option then there is no additional uh, configuration which is required but if you have selected the second option which says permit everyone and require MFA there is a lot of configuration that you have to do for MFA so in our case we'll select the first option all the options that I'm telling you right now and all the purpose of the different options that I'm telling you right now that will remain common irrespective of what kind of application you are creating or what kind of trust that you are creating for its respective applications now this configuration will vary depending upon your application requirement but I'm trying to cover each and every option now I'll click on next and you'll get a summary of all the options that you have selected and that you have mentioned while configuring the relying party trust I'll click on next and then I'll click on close now as you can see the relying party trust is created but right now there will be no claims that will be sent to this particular application because there are no claim issuance policy for this particular relying party trust now what is claim issuance policy these are the set of rules which defines which attribute has to be sent or which claim has to be sent in the authentication token I will be talking about claim rules and the role of claims as well as specifically in that video wherein I will be talking about claim rules but for this demo from relying party trust perspective just understand that all the claims that has to be sent to an application are defined on this particular window or on this particular option now let's move back to our deck and get a quick summary about the key concepts that you have to remember about relying party trust the very first one is it is always configured on ADFS server for an application which will be contacting ADFS to get the authentication done ADFS validates the authentication request received from application by the help of relying party trust or by the help of the information which is available in the relying party trust the validation process is actually done by the identifier value which is available in the relying party trust 
and which should be same or which should be present while application is sending the authentication request to your ADFS server. Protocols that are supported by ADFS, RWS, Fed, SAML, OAuth, and OpenID Connect. 2016 supports all four of them, but 2012 R2 supports WS Fed, SAML, and a particular flow of OAuth. I have created an entire playlist for OAuth, and which I will be sharing in the description section. If you guys want, you can review that as well, and that will give you a better about idea about how this protocol works. Now, depending upon the protocols that you are using to contact ADFS, there will be a different type of token which will be sent. So if you are using a WS Fed application, you'll get a SAML token. If you are using SAML protocol, you'll also get a SAML token. For OAuth and OpenID Connect, you'll get a JOT token. The SAML token that you will get from ADFS if you are using WS Fed and SAML will be an XML formatted and the JOT token that you will be getting if you are using OAuth and OpenID Connect will be JSON formatted. So let's talk about a quick summary about this particular video. In this video we have talked about relying party trust. We have also talked about very briefly what is claim provider trust. What are the protocols supported by ADFS and in the next video I will be showcasing you how you can use ADFS help tool to check the authentication process for different protocols. If you guys have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section. For any feedback or query, reach me at learnconceptswork at gmail.com. Thank you so much guys. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.